All right, so today we're going to do a breakdown on Avalanche, take a look at what's been happening within that ecosystem. There are some big things that are starting to resolve now. We're starting to see actual movement within their roadmap, and some other things are happening, I think, strategically that we want to break down for you guys. This is a big one uh, for sure. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Of course, we'll be breaking into it today on Avalanche. I do want to thank our sponsor, and that is Chart Prime. If you guys are looking to elevate your game in the trading aspect, Chart Prime is one of the tools that we use, and actually we've started to use more and more of this. We are now dropping some training videos, and if, in your, if you're in our mastermind group, you can actually get some trading signals that we drop in there weekly. Uh, every Friday is what our plan is right now, so we work with Chart Prime to get those done for you. All you have to do is click our link down below. You'll get some discount just by using our link. It does help the channel out. All right, so let's get into a couple of things here today. And one of the things that you will probably have seen, uh, maybe on our Twitter account over the weekend, was this tweet right here. Avalanche daily active users have uh, somewhat skyrocketed. And, uh, and then, of course, monthly active users also starting to move. So interesting aspect when you think about Avalanche as an ecosystem, many people would compare this similarly to maybe Solana. And I think this is what sets up Avalanche as a very unique proposition going forward, especially into our next um, you know, bull market. Will Avalanche be one of the winners? Could it be the next Solana for the next bull market? So we'll break down all that good stuff for you guys uh, today. There's some things going on within their subnets also. Lots of activity uh, growing here. A lot of new aspects to the subnet itself. So if you look at that, users uh, as well as unique, um, unique users, as well as subnets, now you start to see a little bit more of a picture. There's some things that we also gleaned from their recent event recently that uh, will give you guys some insights to this. And I want to click, I'm going to jump to a couple of clips here. One is on the AVAX bridge, and this is an important clip. Uh, listen to what they had to say about this. Uh, we hit a pretty interesting milestone recently where uh, you have all of these native bridges from each of these individual ecosystems, right? So Avalanche has its own native bridge. Uh, Polygon, Arbitrum Optimism. These typically have the subdomain, you know, your arbit bridge.arbitrum.com, bridge.avalanche.com, whatever that may be, typically free to go into and out of the ecosystem. They sort of have all of the structural advantages. And we hit this milestone of layer zero now starting to do uh, as much or more messaging volume into each of these ecosystems as their own native bridge, uh, which was like a very sort of pivotal moment of, of just proof of, of what we were doing that this sort of like, the fact that you would start to have more messaging flow in each of those. But the more interesting part of this is that this milestone is not now, this was actually eight months ago, and this is what it looks like now. So, um, you know, you're talking 97 to 99.65% uh, market share from each of these ecosystems. So somewhere between 50 to 200 X volume that layer zero does to each of these ecosystems. They were only pairwise, right? So you could go from Ethereum to Avalanche and Avalanche to Ethereum, but you couldn't go from Avalanche to Solana or to Arbitrum or vice versa. Same thing, ETH to Arbitrum, Arbitrum to ETH, but you couldn't go Arbitrum to Optimism. The desire and ability to have a fungibility of assets or like a homogenous user experience across those is super important. All right, so I would agree. I think this is a big step in the right direction for bridges out there, and, and it does kind of give some benefits to the market in general. Avalanche kind of being one of the first that really has stepped up the game here. This next clip is talking about their core uh, beta program. And if, if you get, you've probably heard us talk about core. What I would recommend is just go over to core.app and you can learn a little bit more about it because uh, it is a very big aspect of how companies in Web 2 will start to convert to Web 3 activities. Let's listen in on this clip right here. The final reason we built it and the main reason we really built it was solving the problem that was mentioned before, or listed before, sorry, is uh, a we wanted to build a consolidated tool all within one umbrella. So what we're building in this now is we're enabling users to stake directly to validators or delegate directly to validators from the dashboard. And this isn't what you've seen on other ones where this isn't liquid staking, but this is you having your node ID and be able to have a UI and stake directly to that. The other thing that we're building, which is actually pretty cool, but it's a lot of work, is uh, NFT marketplace aggregator. 
There are many different marketplaces. Things are priced differently. And if you're very much into your NFTs, you should be able to like list on multiple marketplaces, see what the best price is, or see what the best price is for the same NFT project across multiple marketplaces. Us, like what we're doing is pulling in all that information from, say, uh, NFT Trade or Joe Pegs. What are they pricing at these different ones and putting them into one place so that you can see like what is the best price. I don't need to go to these other ones. So that way you can just interact with the best marketplaces from one location. And again, we're not doing anything in such a way where we're building our own marketplace. We're not executing these transactions. You're still interacting with these other marketplaces. We're just making sure that it's easier for you to get to them. So again, we're not trying to compete with the, in the same sense of, oh, we want to build our marketplace. We want these projects to flourish. We want you to use them. We just want to make it easier for you to find them. All right. So I think, again, this gets back to the benefits of Core and what Avalanche has been trying to do. We've had John Wu on here many times talking about the potential opportunity here of Web 2 to Web 3 conversion, mainly because the tech stack for Web 2 is so you know, it's so resonant within the industries of all s sorts of industries and businesses, and you've got to be able to bridge that to the next level. So Core does open up some opportunities here. Let's get into our next clip. This talks about push notifications, which is kind of interesting because this does take it up a level, especially for everyday people getting into crypto as a whole. Like this is the fancy new stuff, the cutting edge technology that we are really releasing. And we already have a lot of beta users in private testing. And we want to eventually release this, hopefully this July. We have push notifications and wallet to wallet chat. This is something that it's so normal in Web 2, but in Web 3, we kind of just didn't do it. There's like this pattern where people play with Web 3, they connect the wallet, and then they might just not be bothered to check it again. Or even you have the opposite side, which is you just want to keep track of your balances and you have to keep connecting. So there's like this anxiety associated with Web3. And the missing piece here, in my opinion, is push notifications. Essentially, they could interact within the push notification without even visiting your dApp. This was actually quite simple because once you actually have a messaging network where all of the wallets are connected to, and then you have all the dApps, then you could essentially create a wallet-to-wallet -wallet chat experience. The only thing that we actually had to introduce was identity verification. We're going to launch, hopefully in July, the Web3 Inbox app so that you can all use it. And then in Web3 Inbox SDK, slowly wallets will start adopting this once they realize that users have demand for this. How does it look? This is Web3 Inbox. In the left, you can see the chat conversation. You have two users sending tokens and NFTs, and they're conversating with their ENS names. And in the right, you will see a bunch of popular applications. Uh, right now, we only have like EVM uh, partners. Um, and basically, they have the ability to notify their users about the latest activity. In this simple interface, we essentially created a communication protocol that is built in the most important identity in Web3, your wallet. Your wallet should be the hub for all of your activity and also this access control for everything that you do and therefore you should be able to communicate it directly to you. This is something that every Web3 company out there, project out there should be trying to strive to get to because I think this is a major leap forward in user UX and that kind of uh, benefit that it does operate that way within what we'll see in Web3, I think it's gonna be the critical moment of how normies in general people might start to experiment with this stuff. They're expecting these kinds of services. So the fact that they're doing this and it's rolling out literally this summer is a pretty big advancement uh, in their roadmap. We'll go into their roadmap here in a minute and I'll show you some other stuff. But I wanna jump over to another clip here and this is about the Neobank Meld. Listen to what they had to say. Today we're announcing Meld Finance. So Meld Finance is going to be launching on August 1st. This is our crypto fiat Web3 Neobank. It is not custodial. We do not hold anybody's crypto. So the bank offers very low rates when it comes to swapping crypto and fiat, a half a percent. No more sort of, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight percent from MoonPay and companies like that. You can swap it on demand. It's instant. So on your terms, you don't have to do KYC every single time. You don't have price limits or sorry, you don't have volume limits. It's working like an actual bank. You get a debit card. 
You get the ability to stake your assets to generate a yield. All of the benefits that you get in traditional crypto, along with the basic functionality, you know, Swift, SIPA, all these kinds of things in fiat. All of this is interactive. All of this will be part of our mobile app. This is the app that will go into beta on August 1st. You'll be able to download it from the App Store, and this will be your primary interface into the NeoBank. All right, so that's a big statement. Uh, when you look at platforms, think of this in a way, if you had Ethereum and or a Solana going into this level of integration on the finance side of this, which really I think changes the game a lot for where Avalanche could be going. We're going to try to get the Meld team on, their CEO, maybe to have them come on the network, break this down a little bit further, but maybe look at a larger you know, roadmap as to what Meld is trying to do within the crypto ecosystem. So we'll look at that. And then I want to go to this last clip. This is talking about their uh, mainly their NFT platform and, and the gaming with in-game speed. This is an interesting one as well. Aim, index.html. I'm going to go live. It's going to fire it up in my browser. So whenever I press... So you can see that the run score, I don't know if you can see it, but the run score is going to be incrementing. Whenever I jump up and hit an NFT, the NFT uh, balance will increase. You can see the cumulative score increases any time I run into an obstacle. And then now I want to connect my wallet. You can see I have my core wallet here and I have 3.75 um, run tokens. Whenever I claim them, I can claim the NFT as well. It's taking a second for that to get approved. And then whenever I go to core, the balance will have increased. So 3.8. Hmm. All right. So interesting stuff here. I think because uh, integration into gaming is going to be critical for Avalanche. Avalanche has made the big step moving this way. You see a massive growth in users. And we've, we've looked at maybe where that's happening, mostly in Asia. And the opportunity now starts to set itself up, I think, nicely for NFT integration, game integration, all tied to potentially maybe a dashboard that controls and gives you access to all of this sort of data. So, all right, so just to go to Merit Circle a little bit, here's a clip on what they're doing with subnets. Let's take a look. Uh, Ethereum was created with this intent of general purpose, right? And I mentioned that a moment ago, and that's great. And it brought us really far in 10 years. Uh, this, there's a lot of general purpose blockchains right now. I don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't want to build that. We're building a subnet called Beam on Avalanche, and it will be opinionated for the sake of gaming. It is targeted at gaming. It is not meant to be general purpose. We can do fee config changes after the fact. That gives us a lot of flexibility. We can use proof of stake mechanics, which Avalanche calls uh, the elastic subnet. But the most important one is that we can whitelist trusted partners to deploy contracts. That significantly reduces the security footprint, but it also allows us to be really innovative in what we do with smart contracts. Most smart contracts that you deal with today have extra code in them to deal with bad actors or exploits, but it's at the code level because you can't trust who's going to call that contract or who else is going to be on that chain. Well, if that gets removed, you can do a lot more interesting things at the contract level because a lot of those things aren't enforced at the protocol level. Um, but I do think that having all these games as subnets, if they were going to run their own chain, would be just an obvious thing for the ecosystem thanks to AWM. Warp messaging allows us to do arbitrary messaging across subnets without having to deal with a bridge. Well, that makes some pretty interesting ecosystem plays in between games or maybe a chain that's just supporting uh, operations or smart contract ability. Like, there's a lot of neat things we can do there. A lot of new innovations here. So really kind of Avalanche has been one of those companies, one of those projects that has started to stretch the boundaries. And we've often questioned whether or not they were going to start to really hone in on their roadmap. And it appears they're doing it. You know, they're actually going with a rollout that is not, you know, a year from now, 18 months from now, but actually real time uh, activity within their roadmap. So uh, kudos to them for what they're doing. Another aspect of this is getting into their, I would say, their primary game on the platform that has got, I would say, the most recognition, and that is Shrapnel. We've had the Shrapnel team on here before, but if you look at just some of the gameplay, this is just an example of some of the gameplay, that, and Shrapnel still is, in my opinion, one of the top games out there in terms of graphics and interface. The opportunity here, again, being on the Avalanche ecosystem is another great one for the potential of Web3 gaming. And I think now Avalanche has actually set themselves up as a major player in the Web3 gaming uh, sector. So I want to jump over to a clip here. 
on the Shrapnel tech stack. Listen to what they had to say. Okay, so now what do we have? Now we're looking at each other saying, oh, we got some things on it. Ethereum, and we have some things on Polygon, and we have some things on Avalanche. What do we do with all this? You can call it luck, or you could call it genius, but what we have now is a tech stack that bridges between chains. And what we're doing is proving that as a case study. The thing about gaming is we do lots of marketing. You have to market to build that community before, during, uh, the lead up to launch, launch, and then post launch. And a lot of times you're going to do that with partners, and sometimes those partners have chosen a chain that's not yours for a variety of reasons. We saw this. Ourselves, there was a large retailer, a game retailer in the US, and said, yes, we'll work with you, but you have to work with this chain. And so what we had to do was deliver these things I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment, but across multiple, multiple chains. So we chose Avalanche, um, but um, some folks were using other things. We had to work with them. And we had to do different types of NFTs for marketing. We kept hearing from people, I know you're going to make your platform available later. Could you actually make it available a little bit earlier for folks? Because people are sort of struggling in different areas. So today, I'm going to tell you about GameBridge. GameBridge takes everything that we've done is making that available to every other game that's being developed right now. With a goal to empower everyone from hobbyists to AAA studios. The nice thing is we had to dial it up to 11, and once you build a knob that goes to 11, you can turn it to anywhere in between. All right, so good movement there. I think, again, this is just more uh, opportunity for Avalanche as a whole. And again, this is the same thing that we talk about here on the show uh, quite a bit, is what projects are we going to look at in this next bull run? You know, we're really focusing in on the gaming aspect. We think that's going to be one of the home run sectors for the next run up. Much like what we saw in some of the blue chips, you know, with the previous bull run, whether you look at Solana or many others, even Avalanche to a certain extent. But I think Avalanche is so much further along now. And when you take a look at just the Amazon play and also Ava Cloud, which is really where they are today versus what's maybe coming, they did a slide within the presentation. Uh, and in this video that I think is pretty uh, straightforward. So they've got all of this going on right now, pre-compiles, Ava APIs, their console, the wallet validators, et cetera. And then right here on the roadmap, this one gets interesting. Ava Pay, gasless relay, the validator marketplace, uh, partner marketplace, and then NFT mentor and signer services. So there's some very interesting aspects to where they are rolling out in terms of roadmap. And I think this is a key factor if you are watching some of the players out there within the industry right now, blockchain, converting Web 2 to Web 3, who are going to be the winners there? I think Avalanche is most likely going to be, if not the number one horse, in the top two for what we'll see in terms of the benefit going forward. So I want to get into a couple of other aspects of this. This is the Blanco's block party. And what I want to showcase here is this, of course, is Prime Gaming. So you get a chance to see it right here. There's Amazon. And if you scan down a little bit, there you go. You can go in and claim an NFT. Now, granted, this is not necessarily on Avalanche, but the opportunity here is wide open for this very thing to actually uh, take place. Now, that is usable out there in the open market, just like any other NFT that you might use. This happening all within, back to the, the previous tab there, all happening right here within Prime Gaming. So... This is a big step forward. Remember Amazon and Avalanche's capability and partnerships of really bridging the gaps between Web 2 and Web 3, which could get into traditional game studios, a lot of different companies that could start to utilize this framework. There could be a lot of things starting to happen here, especially with the connection between um, Avalanche and where Amazon is going. All right, further I want to get into, and that is uh, this last clip that talks a little bit about fidgetals. Listen in. Encoding them, integrating them into your products, NFT contract deployment and minting on the locked NFT protocol that you just saw. So this is Legitimate's actually end-to-end uh, -end turnkey solution for brands to tap into a premier digital ecosystem. You know, we handle all of that for you. We're an end-to-end -end solution. We handle sourcing NFT tags, manufacturing them, encoding them, integrating them into your products, NFT contract deployment and minting on the locked NFT protocol that you just saw. So this is a case study we did with Nike um, a couple years ago. Uh, we, op we integrated a tag into um, a pair of Air Force Ones. You scan it, and it pulls up the NFT. So in this situation, it has already been claimed. But let's take a look at what the auth flow looks like for um, something that hasn't been claimed. So this is a screen recording of how easy it is to effectively unlock an NFT that is tied to a physical product. In this example, 
we're leveraging a custodial wallet solution using SMS to create a wallet for this end customer. Two-factor auth, boom. The NFT is being unlocked and transferred into that custodial wallet. It takes, you know, what, less than five seconds end to end? And here we have a demo token on Gorily locked to an NFC tag that is implemented into a T-shirt. All right, so that right there, I think, is one of the biggest achievements in the capability of going from digital to physical, especially in the NFT side of things, especially when you look at the kind of products and services that are going to be out there to enable this. And this is going to get into luxury goods, authenticity scenarios that play into it, and even branding. And I think branding will be one of the biggest leaps forward in how major brands start to integrate and work with their customers and creating value. That's the other aspect that I think a lot of people are missing. This is very new. I know it's, it gets a little bit complicated, but just think, you know, they were just showing an example there of, you know, Nike and you know, an authentic, if you're a sneaker head, you know what I'm talking about in terms of some of the value of some of the sneakers. But think about, you know, luxury watches, luxury goods, whether it's Louis Vuitton or others that start to integrate, you know, aspects within their devices or within their products that could easily be implemented in this kind of technology. So this is a big leap forward. And I think Avalanche, again, starting to lead the way here. And interesting timing here with the markets as they are right now. If you look at the Amazon chart, let me jump over to that real quick. If you look at the Amazon, or excuse me, the Avalanche chart, just in the last little bit, I mean, we've seen a fairly significant fall off. We'll go back here to Tuesday, April 23rd. Is that, yeah, April 23, uh, down to where we are right now, 46% down on the market. So is this a time to maybe start looking at maybe dollar cost averaging in some of these projects? This is my question right now. So we're looking at a lot of what I call blue chips. But I don't know that I would put Am or excuse me, Avalanche on the blue chip side of things. I think they may be um, a very big opportunity here for the next bull run being maybe one that one or number two play, especially in when you look at all coins, just in general. Here's the key. I think you've got to follow them very closely. You've got to see what they continue to do. And do they actually deliver on the roadmap that they're saying they're going to do? If they actually deliver this summer, this one could get very interesting very quick. We're going to probably uh, try to get more of the Ava Labs team on. We've had them many times here on the show. All right, so just as a reminder, I mean, Av Avalanche, Ava Labs, they're not a sponsor. We, they've not asked us to do this. We, we break these projects down on our own. We dive deep in all of this stuff, hopefully to help you guys, uh, at least in giving your research some padding out there when you're going out there into the market trying to figure out you know what projects are the ones you should be looking at hopefully this will add to your your roster and will get you more information to hopefully you can make some great decisions as we see the next bull market start to roll we're going to do a ton of videos for you guys this week we've got a lot happening obviously with blackrock fidelity many more things that are starting to brew that could start to drive the aspect of bitcoin but what i think is the greater and broader market of projects especially around the rest of the industry uh, starting to break loose here. So it might be an interesting time to start uh, watching out for a lot, of, a lot of movements in there. All right, if you're not part of our Diamond Circle, make sure and jump in now. Uh, just click the link down below. It's very simple. If you want to reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.